This is a contact and constraints update for Abacus. My name is Harry Harkness. I manage the contact and constraints development team for Simulia. Uh, this is the list of topics that we're going to be covering. These, these are, have been released in various versions of Abacus 2022, as shown in the right most column. We'll be talking about enhancements for both Abacus Explicit and Abacus Standard. The first topic is uh, evolving contact feature edges. Um, giving a summary over here that the edges considered for content, for edge to edge contact in our original algorithm was based on the initial feature edges. With that approach, the default setting could miss context. Uh, the default setting was to only consider the feature edges, for example, by default. And even if you gave a feature angle criteria, the initial criteria wouldn't pick up these edges that form as the surfaces buckle in this particular example. Um, so you can see in the case in the, in the figure on the top right, as the buckles form, since since the edges are not considered for contact where the feature edges have formed, the the shell elements are passing right through each other. The new default is based on current feature edges, so contact edges become active as feature edges form. This improves accuracy and usability. So in this case, as the buckles as the buckles form, each increment we consider which edges should be active and that activates the edges where they're needed and uh, the contact is properly resolved. So this is a nice enhancement for, for usability and accuracy so that the, the, the user doesn't need to take control over trying to figure out which edges based on an uh, original um, initial feature edge criteria to have active for the analysis. The next topic is dynamic allocation for general contact. This is an Abacus standard enhancement and is first available in Abacus 2022 GA. The number of contact constraints that may be active, may become active over the course of a simulation is really unpredictable, but we in the past architecture would make an upper bound estimate of how many contact constraints would become active. Typically, most of them would actually remain inactive, causing a significant performance drag. Occasionally, our, our upper bound estimate was insufficient because it was an estimate of an upper bound, and occasionally an error message would be issued stating that the user would need to increase a setting. In Abacus 2022 GA, we added a, a major enhancement to do dynamic alloc allocation of internal contact elements and internal nodes associated with those contact constraints. We've seen 10 to 20 percent performance improvement common among a wide range of, of representative models with this enhancement. Uh, the performance improvements for a sampling of models is shown in this chart. Um, the first model is a, a benchmark model related to powertrain. Most of the other models listed are confidential, but we think they're representative of models from many industries. This development in initiative significantly influences model size information reported in the DAT file. Um, especially fewer internal contact elements and internal contact nodes will, will show up in these the lists. And reduced more realistic estimates of the total number of variables in the model will be shown. So for this uh, S4B GCON model, I'm showing problem size information copied from the DAT file um, for that same analysis across releases. And you can see the re reductions are quite significant. The same data is shown in the last two columns of this slide, along with similar information for two other runs of two other variations of this benchmark, 
One is the S4B small sliding contact pair version of that model. And the S4B GC small is a small sliding general contact version of that model. After these changes, we can see that the, the, the last column here, the, the numbers are much more in line with, with, with the other columns and uh, leading to performance improvements, in this case, something around 12% in pro overall performance improvement for the S4B GCONT model. Um, it's also interesting to note in this chart that uh, in addition to the data reported from the DAT file, the data associated with the actual number of variables exposed to the equation solver can be found in the message file. And I've included that in this table also. And you can, you can see that uh, the number of variables actually exposed to the equation solver is quite similar across the runs and, um, and, and still quite, quite significantly below the uh, number of variables in the model reported in the DAT file. Um, a, big, a, big, a big difference for this difference is that many of the internal variables are not actually exposed to the equation solver, but do show up, do show up in the value reported in the uh, DAT file.